Um, it's coming in like a lion. Today's March 2nd. Just shot the studio shop update. Showed you some new pieces that we have going out and about and auctioning and so forth and so on. But it seems appropriate since March is a spring month. New leaves on the trees that I kind of introduce maybe something that I'd like to do on a regular basis. But I want to get your input on it. Today is definitely going to be a spray session. A couple of things are going to happen. Um, as I walk around this shop, I'm like, you know, I always like to think out of the box. So whenever I can do that and get you guys involved in it, I, I really like doing that. Um, so today, I think we're going to start a new chapter in the 2019 spray sessions. And it's an important day for a couple of reasons. It is traditionally spray session Saturday. Now, I don't know if you guys are going to be viewing this on Saturday because I have a lot of work to do. Um, let me flip the camera up. That's about 20 pieces. That's about 20 pieces. Those bottom two right there. Um, and then I've got some stuff that's almost done and done over here. So there's a lot to get through, but I really wanted to do this, so I'm going to take a little bit of time. Now, don't know if I'm going to title this, What's in the Box? But here's the twist. I'm going to pick something out of this box, and we're going to repaint it. Now, obviously, it can't be a plastic. So it's got to be one of the hard baits in this box. This is the box for February, the Mystery Tackle Box Pro Box. Um, I've gotten the box in the past. It's been a couple of years since I've subscribed to Mystery Tackle, Tackle Box, but I've always loved their format. I like Catchco. Um, e even the, the very entry level stuff that they put out is high quality. It's going to catch you guys fish. I've always believed in it as a subscriber, as an angler. And now <laughs> I want to do something completely different. I haven't seen anybody else do this. So we're going to give it a go and see how it turns out. Now, the pattern is important too. I'm going to flash this up on the screen because it's probably a little bit washed out for you guys to see here. Um, although, if I bring it over, dun, dun, dun. let's get rid of you, Google. I don't know if you guys can see any better on the screen. This is a Tennessee Cumberland darter. It's a blue mask or blue face darter. Um, it, it's... I'm going to flash this up on the screen so you guys can see the actual picture. It's important for a couple of reasons. Um, number one, it's going to bring attention to the fact that it's endangered. Number two, it's going to bring to light the fact that things are endangered all over the place. This is very important for this particular spray because I, I'm going to, at the end of this spray session, ask for a couple of things. Number one, I'm going to introduce you to a young man named Wyatt Crippen. Now, Wyatt is a, a native and resident of Tennessee, which is one of the reasons that this particular pattern is so important. I do know that blue is his favorite color, and this particular pattern does involve a good bit of blue in it. So hopefully, Wyatt, you're going to like that. Now, Wyatt um, has gotten into airbrushing. And Wyatt is, I want to say, probably 13 or 14 years old, and he suffers from a brain tumor. If you go to Facebook right now and you find Warriors for Wyatt, you're going to see a picture of a very handsome young man in a cowboy hat. I believe it's a black and white picture. And I have gotten to know Wyatt through his father, David Crippen, who uh, has recently subscribed to the Brotherhood of Custom Crankbait Painting, because Wyatt and him both, I believe, are very interested and enthusiastic about learning how to airbrush lures, and because Wyatt's going through, so he's going through so much right now, um, it's just a really awesome creative outlet, plus he's a really passionate angler. Um, so I want you guys to get to know Wyatt. 
I want you to go find Warriors for White on Facebook and give him some love. And at the end of the video, I'm going to give away this pattern to Wyatt. So Wyatt's going to get this pattern. But I'm also going to flash a couple of things on the screen. There is a GoFundMe for Wyatt. Um, and I believe that it's available through his Facebook page. I don't ask you guys for anything. I don't ask you guys to support my Patreon account. I don't ask you guys to bring me stuff, although I've been grateful and humbled by all the things that you guys have given me. But I am asking you for this one thing. Go show him some love. If you can't afford anything financially, you're not going to hear it out of me for the rest of it, but I am going to provide some links below if you want to help Wyatt. Um, and definitely show him some love on the Brotherhood of Cra Custom Crankbait Painting page. Um, I expect to see a lot of great things out of this young man. Um, and I believe and I have a lot of faith that he is going to beat this cancer. He is going to beat it. He's going through chemo right now. Other than that, he's just a normal, run-of-the-mill, lovable kid. And he loves to fish, and he loves to spray bait. So Wyatt, this one's for you. Um, let's see if we can do some justice to this Tennessee darter pattern, which is on the endangered list. And it's very precious to me that we get this done. But the cool thing is we're going to use what's in the box. So let's flip open. This is the February box. I haven't gotten my March yet. Um, ideally, this would be really cool on a jerk bait. But there's so much cool stuff that comes in these. But unfortunately, I don't see any jerk baits, but I do see three hard baits. I see a Bagley. Um, I see this Jenko. A lipless is great this time of year, but this might be a little bit big. I'm kind of going for a match the hatch. Um, I do see the Carl's Amazing Baits. This is a runt, I believe they call it, a runt or a grunt. It's a shallow diver. I think this would be perfect maybe to repaint. Um, we might end up doing this. Now it's a little bit small for the pattern, but darters are small as well. So if we can reproduce this Tennessee darter onto this pattern, onto this particular lure, uh, we might have our winning bait today. First things first. We need to see how difficult it's going to be, whether or not we should take the eyes off. We have to take the split rings off. Anytime you do a repaint, you got to take all the hardware off. And that shouldn't be too big of a deal. And this is going to be cool anyways. I don't know if you guys are watching um, Rackley's channel, Justin's. Um, Lake Fork did a camping trip. And I believe he used this runt, not this specific color. I think his was uh, a gill color. Caught a real decent bass in a river or a stream. It's actually like a back creek kind of a deal river. Um, but yeah, ca caught a real nice bass on this. So uh, we know the runt works, swims well. Um, interesting rattle on it. And there's one of two ways we could go with this. We could either paint the entire thing white and then work in the orange and the blue, or we could paint it blue, work in the white stripes. I think we're going to do white, though. White is usually the easiest type of primer to get on there. Get these hooks out of the way. Put this back in the box, Carl. We are going to turn this into that darter. Let's see how difficult the eyes are to get out. If the eyes are going to be a pain in the butt to get out, then we're going to leave them in there. Well, pretty easy. They have not been super glued. Um, we will super glue it when we put in the new eyes. Red would have worked, um, but the darter has silver eyes. This looks like a maybe 4.5 or a 5 millimeter eye. 
Now we just gotta go over to the spray bench and tape this bill up and get to work on this little guy. Tape this bill off real quick. This is not going to be a difficult bill to tape. Looks like this, we're just going to be able to wrap it right around the back here. Pretty reasonable. And then come back around from the other side. That should pretty much do it. We'll snip this end off. <laughs> that mumbling you hear in the background, if you guys can hear it, is Molly Brown stretching out. She's a big dog. So on this pattern, there's a couple of things that I want to check. We're going to do the male. Uh, this particular photograph has a picture of the male and the female. The male looks like I might be able to get away with this Caribbean blue. Let's shake this up. I'm going to drop this since we have a white background on this photograph. That's pretty close. Might just add a little bit of a deep blue. I'm not going to need that much at all to blend, just, just a tiny bit. So if I take this brush and bring it over here, and then now again, I don't know what kind of color values I'm getting off of the camera right now. But if I match this up against what's on the page, I would say that that's a pretty close match. And then for the orange, I want to take a look at this flow orange. And that's way too bright. We don't want that at all. Um, but I'm going to do a couple things with it. I'm going to add in a little pearl tangerine, which is probably going to be a wee bit too dark. And then a canary yellow, because there are some yellow tones in this orange. This is not a real red orange. This is more of a yellow orange. This is, <laughs> which is why it gets its name Tennessee orange. This is that Tennessee Vols color, if I ever saw it. And then maybe just a drop of white. How do you know what to blend? Well, you just kind of play around with it till you get something that looks good. And it's always easier to start out with a lighter blend than a darker blend. And we're just going to mess around with that. We're getting close. We're getting a little closer. Add just a little bit more of that in, and then I'm going to know kind of what proportions to mix it in the cup. I would say that that's maybe a little light. That's probably pretty good. So we've mixed down. You can even see on the dorsal fin here, you can see that there's just a hint of yellow on either side of this orange. But it does have a couple of little twists and turns into it. Looks like there might be a couple of stripes on the top of the eye. Pretty much white all the way on the belly. The belly is going to be completely white. So we'll do, we're going to shoot a, an opaque white and then shoot some pearlescent white just to get that scaly effect. And then we're going to mask in our orange on both sides. 
and then we're going to bring in these little blue triangles and I and I say triangles because that's basically the pattern that I'm seeing is a triangle almost a teardrop but if you're trying to figure out patterns it's helpful if you draw the outline of what you want to do because that's going to give you a better idea of how to take that on. That's almost like a water droplet and then you've got a circle and that's almost like a rectangle. Maybe just a little bit of blue on the tail down here and it looks like as you get closer to the head it almost goes up into the back. So that, when you outline that, really gives you a better understanding of what you need to do. Now for this top half being orange, pretty much all we're going to need to do is mask off the bottom and shoot the orange over top. And then maybe kind of model in a little bit more white. Because obviously you can see that this is not a completely orange pattern on top. In fact, there's orange and white speckled throughout the entire thing. Got my opaque white loaded into the chamber. We're just going to give this an even coat. And because it does have some darker attributes on it as well, those little gill stripes, might need to give this a second coat. Maybe not. We'll see how this goes on. So we've got this pearlescent white on here now, which we're spraying in. And that's pretty much going to set and get happy. I want to kind of give you a little bit of the backstory on how I came to know Wyatt and his dad, David, his mom, Christy. I have not met them. Um, this is just through the wonders of technology and, and the miracles of, of meeting folks through the internet. Um, his dad reached out to me through Facebook Messenger on my Jekyll Bates page and he and he and Wyatt have been beginning to get into the custom crankbait painting. They are making balsa wood baits which is super cool to begin with. That's obviously that's beyond my skill set. I just throw paint. Um, so that's awesome. And he was asking some recommendations and some different things and said that he wished I had some more videos. Um, but he started talking a little bit about Wyatt. Now Wyatt um, has had brain cancer for a number of years, um, discovered since he was a, a young boy. And he's going through the gambit of treatments. Um, I don't know if there have been operations, but I do know that he's currently uh, on another round of chemo and I think it's going to be over in about three months but he's got a a public Facebook page the family has for Wyatt and it's Warriors for Wyatt I want you guys to I'm going to link in description below I want you guys to go show him some love and support um, but what what an amazing young man and he is passionate about fishing he's passionate about learning how to, to paint and I'm just beyond honored to even to get to know these guys so my heart goes out to him but what I did notice is that they have a GoFundMe page set up and uh, I think it started back in July 2018 and they're nowhere near their goal so I'm gonna link that in the description below as well if you guys if there's any of you out there that can afford a couple of bucks um, this young man could certainly use the love and support um, these guys, again, they're Eastern Tennessee, they're um, around, I want to say, around some of the rivers where this pattern is going to just be killer. So we'll get back to the painting, but I just kind of want to give you a backstory about how, how I came to find out about David and Wyatt, and uh, I'm, I'm just proud as punch to be able to, to do something like this for them. We have got the white on there. What I want to do now is I want to kind of mask off this 
particular area going into the gill plate. And to do that, I think I'm going to use a stencil, a longer stencil, and I've used it on a couple of trout patterns, so let me grab that and bring it back over. Now, again, referencing this pattern, it looks like this little piece right here will be almost ideal for the size of this runt. I think this is what I'm going to use to get this orange in. And then we're going to come back and we're going to kind of dab some white in. Let's mix up some orange. And for this orange, I'm actually going to start out with white in here and then just kind of build on that. One of the things that I've learned to do over time is st start light and build darker a little bit at a time. Get that going on. Get this pearl tangerine going on. And uh, just a little bit of canary yellow. Not much, just like a drop. So now, all we got to do is mix it up and make the medicine. Because again, this pattern, this orange, is a, a very yellowish orange, almost like an orange juice color. Maybe tang. But I think that should do. And I think that'll work. Let's load that into the chamber, and then we need to pull our PSI. I've been working right around 38 PSI on the white. But now we need to bring that down a good bit. We're going to just set this stencil on here. There's a couple ways I could do it. I can either move my hand up to hold that and bring that on like that. Could do it that way. Or I could get a little alligator clip and hold it. But I feel more confident if I hold my finger on the bottom eyelet and just make sure we spray low. We're going to hit that top. And now, if the camera can focus on that, we've got a pretty cool split pattern because there is a split pattern. We just need to build on that split pattern. We're going to come back over. We're going to flip this. And just kind of get that dried off. I'm going to flip this and flip this. Make sure that's dry. You don't want any residual on there. And do the same thing on the other side. Just get that pattern right around that eye socket right there. And just kind of come over the top and get that orange on the back of it. And I would say that that's not bad. That's fairly close to what we want it to look like. We're, we're going to go a little bit slower on a pattern like this because I've never done it before and you guys have never done it before. So I really want to make sure we get this right. Um, but I do want to decrease my PSI just a little bit make sure I'm really not blowing paint on. And then I'm just going to lay this on randomly. Just in a couple of spots. Oh yeah, that's, that's going to do rather nicely, I think.
almost wish I had more of a smaller template, but I don't. But I'll use what I have for sure. We'll just make the most out of it. All I'm doing is coming down with this template and random placing a little bit of white onto the back of this and on the sides just to match and mimic how this thing looks in real life. Darters are interesting to begin with because they have such a unique pattern. They're indigenous to the kind of middle, middle Appalachians over to the Ozarks. Um, to be honest, I don't know if they have any kind of a population in the Northeast or on the western, like the Rocky Mountains, I would imagine there's darters all over the United States and perhaps Europe. Um, but if you guys do have them in your neck of the woods, leave me a comment in the description below because I want to know. I'm curious to see how far these little guys travel. Now I know this particular type is endangered and I don't believe that it's hardly anywhere in the uh, in the US anymore so that's another reason for shining a little bit of light on the species and that should do it maybe just one or two more little pockets on here But that's just, that's going to give it a little bit more of a natural look to it before we come and lay in this blue. I really like this stencil for this particular pattern. I do, I do, I do. Maybe one more on the face here. This one right there. Okay, I'm a little bit lacking on this side. Okay, we'll do a little more here. That should do it, I think. That's a pretty good representation of how this kind of folds together here. So we don't want to overkill this white just want to give it the accents that it would have naturally. And I think we've achieved that, I think. This blue, I think if I come over here, I have got, I didn't even think about this before, but this might be perfect. So I've started out with a little bit of pearl white, which is a com art. It's an opaque pearlescence. It's not shaded, not tinted, it's not white, it's not black. It's just clear with glitter, basically, is what it is. I'm going to add a couple of drops of this metallic blue Spectratex because I like it so much. Um, and then we're going to mix in this Caribbean, Caribbean, pronounce it how you want, blue, just a couple of drops. That should do it. Oh, got a little goop on there. I forgot to take that off. That's all right. That's what this is for. There we go. No harm, no foul. Hmm. And I did say I wanted, now I'm not even going to need an entire drop of this. Just, just a tiny bit. There we go. And we're going to mix it together. I'm going to need some Maui blue. I'm good with that. A couple of drops. Folks, just mix it until it looks right. 
my best suggestion keep mixing until you get it right if you got to start over you can always rinse these things out now if you're wondering where I get these I get these these are just little medicine cups almost like what you'd see on a bottle of cough syrup um, still not there yet I want one more drop of Maui blue um, but somebody had a very clever idea and I, I need to start utilizing stuff like that but he grabs his from Wendy's you know those little ketchup little things that you put ketchup in genius genius I, yeah, I do read all my comments folks um, and uh, you guys have some phenomenal tips and just some really neat stuff and that was one of them and that's a good way to save a couple of bucks I mean I wouldn't go in and steal armfuls of the stuff that's probably not a good thing to do but you know every once in a while Wendy's if you're listening you make some really fine mixing cups I am working right now on I want to say eight PSI oh hey Andy thank you shout out um, one of my subscribers said hey you know you're, you're on your feet all day you were talking about your feet hurt every once in a while Andy sent me this awesome Honda Goldwing um, foot mat I also got from Kelly underneath that some crop production services rugs um, so my feet don't hurt folks thank you so much Kelly and Andy you guys are awesome and I appreciate it that's community folks that is the power of community I think let's see here how are we gonna do this crevasse think I can probably get it on no we're just gonna try and do the mask reversed as best we can and bring it up through there just kind of work it around not bad uh, dab this off every time this is a bit of a challenge I would I would definitely give it a a seven or an eight this is not an easier pattern to do the other thing as you can see or maybe you can't we don't wanna if this is too high of a pressure it's gonna blow paint around on here which is something we absolutely do not want to do so I'm gonna bring this down even more just as low as we can get it I think that might be a five I'm working on a five right now PSI just enough to spray enough where we can get going all right I like it we're getting there okay we're going to turn around do the other side and then we're going to figure out the rest of this pattern but I think we're we're definitely barking up the right tree for this blue mast Cumberland Valley Tennessee darter I think for the rest of this I'm going to go I'm going to go from the tail of the lure towards the front I gave this a quick heat set off camera now if you look at these two they look a little bit more rectangular than the teardrop triangle pointed shapes you have further up the lure we're kinda gonna run out of real estate obviously this would have been better on the jerk bait but we were working with a really cool Carl's amazing baits on this runt so I think what I'm gonna do here on the back end of this so I'm going to lay this little piece down, these two pieces right here for blue. And I still have blue in the chamber. Still want to make sure I have, yeah, that's going to come out fine. The flow is good. So on the tail, we're going to get this all the way back towards the back here. There's that. 
And then the next one, now I might run out of real estate in this. Um, I might try and do one that's all the way up, but I'm definitely going to get on these two rectangular shapes and get that going. Let's see, it looks like it kind of goes into the orange there a little bit. It'd be real easy on that trigger control. Now we just need some more triangular shapes in this. And I think we can probably find it if we look hard enough. Let's see here. This one. Next one needs to be just a little bit bigger. And if we don't get it perfect, then hey, I'm working with what I have. And the whole point is to be creative and kind of think out of the box on patterns that you haven't tried before. But I'm digging the way this is turning out. I really, really am. Kind of dab these off as I go. I'm going to try not to use the same one for any of these. I might need to cut this a little bit just to fit it on the bait and not have it feeling awkward as I'm trying to spray it. This is going to get this. As we work our way forward, it gets a little taller. And then right off of the, right behind the gill plate right there, it looks like I'm going to need one fairly tall. Then we got to go back and do it on the other side. Where'd my other little piece go? There it is. So let's flip that around. And use this as our last one. All right. I have just the tiniest bit of sepia I want to add. Not much at all. I just finished cleaning the chamber out. Make sure this is going to spray and it looks like it's going to spray a little heavy. That's a little better. That's perfect. Okay, sepia. Right around the eye. On both sides. And if you look closely, there's just the slightest hint of sepia in some random splotches going down the back. So what I may do is get a small, I need like a net type deal, like this. Oh, that might stretch out too much. Uh, I mean, I've got about 
miles of this green stuff, but that's every day. I wonder if I just laid it. Hmm. All right. Let's heat set this. We're gonna do. We're gonna do the rest of this on camera together. And I'm wondering if. Take this just kind of gently wrap it around to where it stays relatively small on the back and then come in. I'm not going to pinch this off because I really want it to just barely be noticeable in a couple of spots. And then let's heat set that. Always heat set before you lift anything off of anything. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Digging it. I'm going to do the same thing on the belly, only much lighter. Much, much, much lighter. It's real easy. And then heat set that. So if I pull that out, the scales get too big for the bait. So we want to keep it in proportion if we can. I'm okay with that. Because if, again, if you look at this real close in this area, you've got a little bit of that darker shading. So this netting was a good match. Garlic, produce aisle, in your, in your grocery store. This held garlic bulbs. Think out of the box. I think we're ready to get some eyes on this. What do y'all think? These little guys, without a doubt, have silver eyes. So we're going to be using the fish skull living eyes in the ice color, which is the clearest silver. It's got a little bit of dark around the edge, which is what we see on that. Um, well, I'll just show you again now um, on the photo reference. And these are five millimeter eyes, which work perfectly. And we've got just a little bit of sepia around that edge. And now we've got those eyes laid in. If you do a little walk around, and I'm going to show you on a little bit better of a camera than this GoPro, but uh, we are ready for some clear coat on this Carl's Amazing Baits. It's the runt. Zero to three, perfect for smaller, skinnier water like streams, creeks, where these little guys would live. Um, I'm excited to have you throw it, Wyatt. So this is the Blue Mask Darter, native to Tennessee. We're going to go ahead and call this Wyatt's Darter for today's pattern. So give you a little bit better look at it. We're going to get it in some clear coat and do a wrap. Last, but certainly not least, we get to dip this little sucker. Dipping it into KBS Diamond Strength Epoxy. It is a one step application. We'll put this drip wire in. And 
let it run right down the bait. And that's what's that's what its job is, and that's what it's going to do. And we'll give you a quick shot of it when it's all happy and dry. Just to give a quick recap of what we did today, we started out with the Mystery Tackle Box Pro Edition. We chose a bait and decided to do a pattern on it. I like this format. If you guys like this format and you want to pick a bait for me to do every month, we are going to do it. Um, this is the February box that I got. I'm excited because I, I did get a, an email from Carl Von Dibble himself saying that they're packing my March box right now. Pretty stoked about that. Uh, I am not sponsored by Mystery Tackle Box, but I think it's a really cool concept because nobody has done it that I've seen or we're taking a monthly bait and turning it into something even cooler than it already is. So something to do, something to play around with. Um, we know if you guys have been watching videos with MTBs that these baits do work and they try and tailor them to the areas that you guys live in the country and they give you awesome baits. So check out the Mystery Tackle Box. Today's pattern was for Wyatt. I'm really excited to be getting to know him through the wonders of social media. Social media is not always a bad thing. And I don't always ask, and I hardly ever ask you guys for anything, but I'm going to leave a couple of links in the description below. I want you to find him at Warriors for Wyatt on Facebook and show him some love and support. Maybe you're going through a similar circumstance or a situation in your life, or you've been, you've been through something really tough, and you can help the family relate to what you're going through. The power of community is something that's stood the test of time, and we have an amazing angling, airbrushing community right here. Um, also through the Brotherhood of Custom Crankbait Painting on Facebook, I'll leave that description as well. If you guys are interested in learning how to make custom baits and you want to do something a little bit different, it's a fantastic learning environment. It's almost like going to college for airbrushing lures. There's 5,000 plus members there. You can find a wealth of knowledge that's just just some of the most amazing airbrush artists there on the planet. It's global, um, family friendly. So check that out as well. Wyatt has a GoFundMe. Wyatt's family has put up a GoFundMe. It's been active since July of 2018 and they are nowhere near their goal. If you can spare a few pennies today or as you get to this video whenever you get to it, um, I encourage you to help a family um, combat and just kick the snot out of brain cancer because through your help and through faith all things are possible so thanks for watching today thanks for tuning in i appreciate you all stopping by i love each and every one of you again humbly humbly thank you and wyatt this one's for you brother